What's good, everyone? Welcome back to Keep It Techie, where we break down Linux and teach you in a way that makes it simple and approachable for everyone. I'm your host, Josh, and today we're diving into one of the most essential Linux commands out there, and that's the DF command. Now, if you're just getting started with Linux or you've been using it for a while, knowing how to check your disk space is critical. And guess what? The DF command does just that and more. So stick around, and by the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to master this command like a pro. Let's get to it. All right, let's start off with the basics. DF stands for Disk File System, and it's used to report disk space usage on your computer. So when you're managing a server or even your personal system, knowing how much space you have left can save you a ton of headaches, like running out of space during a critical update or while installing software. And just to show you guys, the DF command is simple but powerful. By default, it shows details like the file system name, the total size, space used, space available, the percentage of space used, and the mount point where the file system is attached to your system. But here's the kicker. With the right options, you can make DF show exactly what you need in a format that makes it easy to read. So let's go on and hop over to my virtual machine so I can show you guys how to use the DF command. So like every time I do one of these command line utilities, the first thing I try to show you guys is the man page. So first off, let me open up the man page for the DF command. Press enter. And so why is the DF command so important? So imagine this, you're running a web server and suddenly your site goes down. You check the logs and boom, you're out of space. That's a nightmare nobody wants. And so the DF command helps you avoid situations like that by giving you an overview of your storage. So whether you're monitoring disk usage, planning for upgrades, or just making sure your system stays healthy, this command is the tool that you wanna use. And don't forget, it's not just for troubleshooting. It's also great for optimization. If you're a home labber like me or running VMs, you can use DF to see if certain drives are underutilized or overloaded, which is a super dope feature. And so I'll leave you guys to go through and read the man page. I just wanted to show it to you guys so you can see. They do have a whole bunch of options in here. Uh, you guys can check it out for yourself, but I'll show you guys a couple examples that resonate with me or that I've used in the past when it comes to working with disk space and trying to manage it on my systems so let's get into that all right so let's jump into some examples to see df in action i'll walk you through five different ways to use the command and the first one is the basic usage of df and all you have to do is type df and press enter and just to walk you guys through what this is showing this shows all your mounted file systems with their usage but let's be real those sizes are in blocks which aren't super intuitive so let me show you guys the first option we want to throw in there right fast and let's go down and clear again and let's just type df and then the first option is dash h and you'll start realizing that a lot of these options are the same for multiple command this basically puts the sizes in a human readable form so it'll take it from those block sizes up to sizes that are simpler to read and let me show you guys an example let's go down and press enter as you can see it took them from the block sizes like this U dead right here, how it's in 1K blocks. Yeah, that's very hard to read right there, right? So if we go down here, you'll see that it's two gigs or 1.9 gigabytes. And it also breaks it out, let's say in megabytes. So if it's in megabytes, it'll, you know, put it in a format that's easy to read. So VDA1, that's the hard drive for the system, the root directory, that's four, eight gigabytes, as you can see. So it puts it in a format that's super simple to read. And these are all temporary file systems. Let's see, vice that, I don't even know what that one means, to be honest, I can't remember. I, I looked into it before, but I can't remember what it means. But to temporary file system you'll see it's tied to like services and all that stuff but like i said it'll show you guys all the file systems that are currently active on the system now one thing with the df command is you can look at a specific file system 
And what you want to use is the mounted location. So let's say we want to look at our home directory or our root directory. So all you got to do is type F and then dash H. I'm going to use the human readable. That way we can get, you know, I'm going to use that on pretty much on all the future commands. So you guys can see the size is a little bit better. We're working with bigger, you know, sizes. So it makes sense to actually use it. But all you got to do is specify that location. And like I said, we want to look at the root directory. So let's press enter and that'll just Break it down and show us just that one file system that we specified, which is, you know, our root directory. So we got that 48. It got rid of all those temp, you know, file systems, device. Yeah, everything that's temporary or that's not a normal file system that we want to see or that we didn't specify, it'll show it just that. And then also you can do this with any location on a on a file system. So let's press the up arrow. Let's type uh home. I believe that will work for us. It'll look at just our home direct. Well, it's just gonna pull up the mounted directory, which is it has to be mounted over here. And I forgot we don't have our file system separated. Like a lot of times I have different partitions for like the home directory under root or a different partition for I don't know something else on here. It'll show you you know the different sizes for that lo those locations which i didn't set up this system. i forgot i didn't set the system up that way i should have pulled up a linux system with more separated file systems like with lvm and all that stuff i might add into something else so we can see and actually let's do that since we're here so let's clear and i'm gonna ssh into one of my servers so let's see 10.10.55 and press enter and this will open up i think this is my plex server i believe so I know for sure this has a lot of drives on it. So, and let's go down and run that DF command. And that's what I mean by POSIX command. I said that in like another video or a previous video. Uh, it's a command that works pretty much no matter what distro you're in. Like this is Debian base right here. This Kali 24. The server I'm logging into is Ubuntu. Oh, and wow, it looks like my root directory is running out of space. So that's, yeah, that's one of the reasons you want to use a DF command. And actually, I'm going to pause right fast and I'm going to fix that. I just don't want to show you guys what I'm doing. All right, so I freed up space in there. And let's go and run the DF command over here right fast. So DF-H and press enter. And as you can see, we got a little bit more stuff to work with over here. So there's our root directory. And as you can see, it's kind of freed up now. It's only using like 22% now. A few minutes ago, it was like almost 97%. So I cleared it up right fast. And that had to do with my server and the transcoding and all that stuff so and what i need to do is get an ssd so i can do all my transcoding on the ssd and attach it to this virtual machine and let the transcoding happen over there and also run something to clear up or free up space on there so it'll keep transcoding properly oh and i forgot to store my plex server i gotta get this back up the kids go crazy or my wife go crazy because she watched stuff on there too. So start Plex media server. Yeah, let's go on and start that up. So let's go on clear. But that's the DF command when you're looking at other drives. And like I was saying, you can look at different, you know, specific ones if you want to. So if we want to run it against our dev mapper, which is our root directory, that's the that's the LVM. That's the way that's set up. So let's type or that's the way it shows. But if we type DF uh, dash H and then specify our root directory. Boom. We just look at that. We can also look at other locations like this mounted directory. I got a 10 terabyte drive over here that's holding a bunch of movies. That's a shared drive that I have mounted to this server. Let's look under there as well. So let's go mount and then have to type it in correctly, but mounts and then videos is mounted to that location. Let's press enter. Boom. There we go. So we got that mount location. So we can look at something more specific. Now, let me show you guys another option with the DF command. You can look at different file systems. You can see the type of file system. And it's an option in here. Let's go down and clear. And I'm gonna specify, let's say, let's specify a root directory again. So I'm gonna put dash T and then the root directory and it's capital T, so you guys know. But this will show the file system. So file system type is EX4. That'll add it to, you know, our columns that are shown there. And if we take off, you know, a specific location and just run DF dash T, it'll show you all the file system types. So there we go. You can see all the different file system types. And like I said, this was a Samba share. So it's using CIFS to, you know, for the connection to that Samba share. And so that's why it's showing CIFS is mounted. And then also we could throw that dash H in there. So we see it in a human readable format as well. But you can see the, you know, the file system types, which are right here in the second column. Now, let me show you guys how to exclude files that you don't want to see or file systems that you don't want to see. Let's say you don't want to see, I don't know, those temporary file systems. So TFS, let's say we want to see that. We just want to see our other drives that are not the temporary file system. So it's a dash X option. So we type DF dash X and then we specify that 
file system that we want to not see. So temp FS, and then let's throw that dash H in there. So we see it all human readable and press enter. And that'll exclude all those temporary file systems. So you can specify what you don't want to see by using that dash X. So just wanted to show you guys that this is a great way of looking at your drive space on all your different files. Let me log out of this server and actually run that DF dash. And then what was it? Temp FS. Let's see, we don't want to see that. And then we want to put it in human readable form, you know, and this is for that local Kali system. So we run that, that same command. You'll see that excludes all those temporary file systems when it didn't before. So I'm gonna run it again. So DF dash H boom, you'll see, you know, all those temporary file systems disappeared when we put the dash X in that temp FS, which was that those file systems we didn't want to see. And we're only seeing what we want to see. You'll see that U dev, and you can even exclude that U dev. You can exclude more than one file system, just so you guys know. So let's say you don't want to see that U dev as well. So we could type dash X U dev as well. Let's go down and run that again. And you'll see it's just pulling up that one. Oh, actually it's Oh, that's weird. I never seen that happen. So you dev for some reason is still showing it. I wonder why. I know I've I've done it. I've done it on other systems. So maybe it's just Kali. I don't know, but you can exclude more than one file system following that. And there you have it, folks. A quick but comprehensive guide to the DF command. I hope this video showed you why DF is such a critical tool in Linux. So whether you're managing a server, a home lab, or just your personal setup. Mastering this command will make your life a whole lot easier. I'm telling you, it has helped me out through a bunch of situations. You know what I'm saying? So eventually you'll start using this command a lot once you start messing around with your systems. But if you found this video helpful, don't forget to smash that like button and hit the subscribe so you don't miss out on any more Linux tips and tutorials. And as always, drop a comment down below if you have any questions or you want me to cover another Linux command in the future. This is Josh, your Linux guide, signing off. Stay techy, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Yo, what's up, y'all? Listen, if you've been sitting there thinking about making a move, let me tell you, tech is where it's at. I don't care where you're coming from, whether you've got a degree, a GED, or just pure hustle. There's room for you in this game. You see, tech is more than just keyboards and code. It's solving problems, creating opportunities, and building the future. You already have what it takes because tech doesn't care where you start. It cares where you're willing to go. You can teach yourself Linux, learn Python, break into cybersecurity, or even launch your own app. And the resources are out here for free. And yes, you heard me, free. Now, yeah, it's gonna take effort. You'll have to grind, but think about this. The time is gonna pass anyway. So why not invest it in a skill that'll change your life? I mean, tech doesn't just pay the bills. It opens doors to freedom, stability, and generational wealth. So stop doubting yourself, store small, stay consistent, and keep building. Because this isn't just a career, it's a movement. And guess what? You belong here. So let's get it. Because the future is yours to build. Keep it tech.